So this is either the greatest idea ever and will literally change the fabric of our entire tag system or it's unlikely to pass and will be a complete failure. You see, Republicans now control the House and are using their power to go to war with the IRS. Just recently, House Republicans voted to take back the $70 billion in funding meant for the IRS. You know, the money they were going to use to hire thousands of employees and increase tax audits. Well now, House Republicans will be voting on a bill called the Fair Tax Act, which would only abolish the IRS and replace income tax with something called a national sales tax or national consumption tax. If it passes, it will literally change our entire tax system as we know it. And begs the question, is this even a good idea? So let's break it down a bit and look at the pros, the cons, and what it means for you, the government, and really our country as a whole. It begins here. While the Fair Tax Act is getting a lot of shine today, it's actually a bill that was first introduced in the 1990s. 1999 to be exact. And while over two decades old, the main idea for the Fair Tax Act still remains intact today. It starts with introducing a consumption tax at the federal level, where everyone pays the same amount of tax regardless of income. So it's basically a flat tax on retail sales that would replace the current federal income tax system, including personal and corporate income taxes, gift taxes, payroll taxes, and debt taxes with a single national consumption tax, eliminating the need to file an annual tax return or even a W-2. It's a bill introduced by this guy, Earl L. Buddy Carter, a representative of Georgia to replace the current tax code with a national consumption tax known as the Fair Tax Act. And Carter has this to say about it. Co-sponsoring this Georgia-made legislation was my first act as a member of Congress and is fittingly the first bill I am introducing in the 118th Congress. Instead of adding 87,000 new agents to weaponize the IRS against small business owners and middle America, this bill will eliminate the need for the department entirely by simplifying the tax code with provisions that work for the American people and encourage growth and innovation. Armed elected bureaucrats should not have more power over your paycheck than you do. So how exactly will the Fair Tax Act or a national consumption tax even work? If there isn't an IRS to collect the taxes, who carries that burden to collect them? I mean, someone has to, right? Well, of course, and currently, the idea is that individual states will replace the IRS in becoming the big bad tax collector. And because individual states already collect sales tax, they would be in charge of collecting additional taxes on behalf of the US federal government and then remitting those taxes to the US Treasury Department. Now, I have to give it to them because the Institute for National Taxation and Economic Policy makes four great points regarding this thought that individual states should be responsible for collecting taxes. First, they note that every state currently exempts certain purchases from sales tax that might actually be subject to a national sales tax. Secondly, there are five states that currently don't even enforce a sales tax at all. That's Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, Oregon, and Alaska. Next, according to the proposed bill, for states that refuse to administer the national sales tax, the treasury will do it for them. 
Now, I don't know about you, but it kind of sounds like a need for some sort of federal infrastructure to collect taxes. That kind of sounds eerily close to what the IRS is today. And lastly, states have little to no incentive to even collect taxes on behalf of the US federal government. According to the bill, states would receive just one quarter of 1% for all the taxes they collect on behalf of the US federal government and for their job as tax collector. To put it into perspective, for every $100 the states collect for the US federal government, they get a big fat paycheck of 25 cents. So how much does the federal government actually plan to tax you as citizens? Let's find out. In America today, you are taxed based on how much you make. But under the Fair Tax Act, you will be taxed based on how much you spend. That's because under the Fair Tax Act, everyone, regardless of income, will be taxed at a flat 23% in national sales tax. So you think that every $100 you spend would result in $23 worth of taxes, but it's actually not that simple. According to proposed legislation, you'd actually pay $30 in national sales tax for an item that costs $100 before taxes. So most of us would consider that a 30% tax. However, supporters refer to it as a 23% tax because $30 represents 23% of your $130 gross payment which includes the sales tax. Now, personally, I can see how that might be a bit confusing, but others might argue that it still simplifies our currently overcomplicated tax system. And whether you agree with the Fair Tax Act or not, there are some immediate consequences, both good and bad. At this very moment, there's a heated debate going on on whether the Fair Tax Act and the abolishment of the IRS is actually beneficial. First, we have arguments about income and expenses. Those who agree with the proposed legislature will make the argument that under a national consumption tax, Americans will get to take home their entire paychecks, giving them more money to actually spend on things they need and want. Those against a national consumption tax would rebuttal that by saying that nearly 40% of American households currently pay no federal income taxes at all because of how little they actually make. And under a national consumption tax, their expenses would actually increase in the form of taxes, which cuts into the money they need for their bills. Now, to account for this, the Fair Tax Act does include a monthly stipend for those who live below the poverty line. Then there's the argument that a national tax won't produce the same amount of revenue for the federal government as the current tax system does. Well, a report by Brookings found that to replace the income tax on a revenue neutral basis over the next 10 years, would require a sales tax rate of more than 26%. To replace all federal taxes on a revenue neutral basis over the next 10 years would require a sales tax rate of about 60%. Well, which has some merit because if you are taxed on what you spend, some people will just choose not to spend and therefore lowering the amount of taxes the US federal government gets to collect, especially because under the bill, used goods are actually not taxed at all. But as always, you can find studies that contradict this and actually show that a national sales tax would make even more money for the US federal government. Then there's one of the last arguments, which is actually a pretty good one. And it's the argument that in the unlikely chance the bill passes the Democratic Senate 
and White House. Abolishing the IRS is actually against the Constitution. So what are your thoughts? Do you believe a national sales tax is beneficial for taxpayers or actually more harmful for you as citizens? Go ahead and let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like this video for me. It helps other people to see it and subscribe to the channel for more information that helps you save on taxes and increase your wealth. I'm Karan from Life Accounting and I'll see you in the next video.